The suspicious items in my bags don't set off the alarms. Only I can hear them, rolling and rattling in cages that I built for them, sounding like nothing more than unhinged toiletries, only extracted in social settings when interesting means exotic. Instead, I store these things like secrets within Ziploc bags and notebooks. No blaring buzzer would shout its red signal warning when my bag is stowed under the radar. It is silent, like the quiet that I've been taught to be, because most of my kind spend our cues focusing on trying to look as unsuspicious as we can. Back straight, but not too straight that you look alert, eyes glazed, but treading the thin line between blasé exhaustion and foreign living drug experimentation. What sets the alert bells are other things. My name, this brown person triple syllable five-piece collection of vowels that you'll never come across in a best-selling novel. And then there's my skin, an epidermal layer of terror and ambiguous source. They take me to a back room, scan all my fingerprints, make me wait for a few hours, and then the questions come hard and fast. Question, where was I imported from? This passport tells nothing about my face or my hands or my intentions. What right do I have having the same definition of vacation and relationships as someone who falls on a different part of the color spectrum? Question. Are you a practicing Muslim? Now, clearly, this should tell them everything they need to know about my trip because if I said I was a practicing Muslim, I would obviously be mosque hopping and eating kebabs, stringing prayer beads around fire hydrants as a form of silent protest against the anti spiritual, meeting other Muslim women in secret hidey holes in the basement of corner shops deep in discourse about how to pull every innocent white person I meet into my folds using words like faith and submission and eating too much biryani. Answer, no, I'm not a practicing Muslim. I'm a practicing atheist. I can practice right here if you want. Follow-up question. Were you born Muslim, though? Are your family Muslim? Do your parents know? Question. You say you write this poetry thing. Now, what is your poetry really about? Now, at the best of times, I find myself struggling to answer this succinctly without undermining my thematic diversity. But this time, the answer came easily. I write about personal experiences and social observations. And you, sir, you've given me both, but don't take credit for it. It is not your doing as much as it is mine for being born the wrong shade of traveler. Because I am this ticking human time bomb. But to you, I won't even potentially cause the biggest damage. There are others checking boxes more undesirable than mine, poorer than me, or darker than me, handling more faith in their hands and luggage than me. Their names too full with the sound of oppression, their countries more foreign than mine, more curious and suspicious, their movements less western, their accents less understood, their language more problematic than what dips out of my own colonized tongue. There are others with their eyes wider than mine, even after a 14-hour flight, who always have to keep calm. They carry on, rummage through like they are part of a grocery aisle, their lives rightfully on hold because the suspicious items in their bags have been snuck onto the plane with them, taped to their lips and stitched into their tongues, revealing too much difference for them to stow in their baggage without exceeding what they are allowed to carry.